Okay, so let's have a look at what research tells us, and this is where I start to move on, because so far we've not had any mention of digital literacy or literacies or digital citizenship in what we've talked about so far. And we need to have a look at what research tells us, because there are some fa fantastic things that are going on or have gone on already. So uh, they're the four sources that um, we studied. There are other sources you can look at. There are some valuable things out there, but they're the four things that we've looked at. We've got the World Economic Forum, we've got JISC. JISC is out of the UK. JISC is um, a bunch of agencies that were brought together around um, the Open Universities Network. And uh, we've got Belshaw, Doug Belshaw, who um, wrote his, his uh, thesis in one year. Um, yeah, PhD thesis in one year. And he wrote it all online, completely shared it um, via his blog and got all the feedback from it, um, from the things he was writing from day to day, and uh, yeah, produced it in one year. Um, but his work is well worth having a look at. And then we've got ISTE as well. I'm sure I don't have to go into talking about what um, ISTE is, and the standards that ISTE says we should be providing for students. <clears throat> at this point, I think most schools go, well, we've got to do the e-safety bit, but we also want our kids better at IT. They're usually the, the general sort of crude conversations that you have. So what currently exists that's out there? I suspect that there'll be a few people in the room who've come across this one already. This is the idea that students um, have got to develop their own um, DQ. DQ instead of IQ, so some sort of, um, some sort of digital etiquette or digital standard that they put up there. It has some good stuff in it, it has some depth. There's a lot of material that's been done. It's based on research. They have um, questionnaires that you can use, largely aimed at um, primary level. So for the primary teachers uh, that are out there, this is, um, this is actually a decent resource to look at. But they do start to break it down and start to break it down into what is it that a, a student should have in terms of um, digital standards or some you know, digital education when they come out of school. However, I will say however, there are holes in this. Or oh, there were holes in this when we looked at this in our context. So when I'm sat there in a development group with other teachers that developed this with me in my school, we were going, there's some bits here that we think are important that are not included. So then we look at the ISTE standards. Now when you break down the ISTE standards, um, and that was too big to fit on a screen, they're also very detailed and also have a lot of merits. But they too have some holes. So we actually put the two things together. We did a lot of work where we actually compared side by side, what's it saying here, what's it saying here, is that the same as that? That QR code up there will show you our development work. It will show you this side by side. That is our Google Doc I'm sharing with you that will show, the, show you the essence of our work in, in our school. Mashing these two things together, deciding what was important in our context, that's what we decided was right for us. They were the areas that we wanted our kids to focus on. So what we did was we launched um, into the idea of how are we going to possibly assess this with our students. We know this is what we want them to do, um, but how are we going to judge whether they're actually doing it? How are we going to know that they're proficient in uh, advancing their identity and some things like that? And that's when it becomes really, really difficult. So the first iteration of this was actually a paper survey, and I've got some copies in my bag. You can catch up with me any time. I'm, I'm quite willing to give you a copy of that. I think there's an electronic copy on that QR code as well. And um, we came up with a survey but we wanted students to just survey themselves. We didn't want to add to a teacher's load by having them mark this thing. And indeed, what would they be marking anyway? I'm not really that sure. But um, we wanted students to self-assess to see where they were or where they thought they were. So we decided to do that at the beginning of the course. This was year eight, the whole of year eight. And then we did it at the end to see if they'd advanced. So here's what you think you are at the beginning and here's what you think of the end. Now. I don't think that's any amazing measure, but it's certainly better than what we were doing before. 
But then you have to ask yourself, if you're just going to survey kids at the beginning, and then you're going to survey kids at the end, but you're not going to do anything in the middle, well, how do you expect them to advance really and digitally? They'll probably get better on the phones, and there'll be a new game that comes out like Fortnite or something, which will make them better at Fortnite. But they're not really going to be able to advance themselves unless you actually think of what, what you're going to teach them. And there's going to be some explicit teaching in there. And there's going to be some cross-curricular projects that involve some of these capabilities. And you'd hope that they actually get some teaching in digital technologies when it's compulsory and when it's an elective as well. Although five weeks in a year, I'm not sure that that's really going to give them much anyway.